You are amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. At the things you do. You're holy. Yeah, hallelujah. For me, no one compares to you. Hallelujah, no one compares. No one compares to you. I can search all over me, but no one. No one compares to you. Yeah. God, we just worship you today in spirit and in truth. We thank you for being an amazing father. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence. And we thank you for your provision, Lord God. We have come into this house to worship you, to honor you, and to magnify your name, Lord God. And we declare today that you are amazing. There is none that can compare to you, Lord God. 
and we just honor you. We magnify you. We glorify you, Lord God. We give you your proper place in our lives. And Lord, we just thank you. Thank you for the things that you've done. Thank you for the things that you've brought us through. Thank you for the things that we've seen that have taken others out, but you kept us and you continue to keep us and you continue to watch over us. Hallelujah. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling. Thank you, Lord, that you keep us from falling. Thank you, Lord God, that you keep us lifted up. Thank you, Lord God, that you cause us to rise above every circumstance and every situation. Thank you, Lord God, that what the devil meant for evil, you can turn it around for our good, Lord God. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we glorify you, Lord, and we thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you for everything that you have yet to accomplish in our lives, Lord God. Oh, glory to God. We trust you. We trust you with our whole hearts. And we thank you that even when we don't feel it, even when we don't see it, we know you're real and we know you're there watching over us and protecting us and guiding us. And so help us, Lord, to continue to lean upon you, to trust in you and to rely on you, Lord God. As we move forward with this worship service today, Lord God, we want you to stay a while. Glory to God. Dwell in this house. Speak to your people, Lord God. Use me as a vessel to convey your truth to your people. I thank you right now, Father God, that your spirit is here. And Holy Spirit, we invite you to stay and orchestrate the flow of service today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning to you all. Blessings on y'all in Jesus name. You are on my heart this morning. I'm so glad to see you both of y'all. I'm glad to see you. Is Mo coming? Mo just had a baby. OK, you on my heart. Heavy. It's amazing that God brought you in this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. OK, Lord, I'll deal with that later. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Father God, we just pray over Mo right now and over her baby. And I declare that everything that you desire to manifest in her life will be made done and made relevant and manifest. We speak health over the child. We speak health and recovery over the mother. And Lord, I thank you that your hand will protect and keep and guide that child and lead that child in the way that you desire for that child to go. Yeah, Lord, thank you. I use that as a springboard to declare your healing and helping hand over all of our children. Glory to God. Guide our babies, Lord God. Guide our children in the ways that they should go. Speak into their ears, Lord God, minister to their spirits to keep them from going in directions that the enemy has planned to pull them away from your divine protection. Thank you, Lord God, that our babies, our children can hear your voice. And I pray that they have the wisdom and the boldness to follow your instruction. And as they follow your instruction, Lord God, you'll see to it that the path that you have provided for them is protected. From all hurt, harm and danger, seen and unseen. I declare that our children's minds are covered. Our children's bodies are covered. Our children's emotional well-being is covered, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for that custom made cocoon of protection. We declare it over our babies, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Whether near or far, Lord God, wherever they are, I just declare your protection over their lives. I thank you, Father God, that you are moving even now in mighty ways to deliver them from traps that the enemy has set. Deliver them from mental strongholds that the enemy has erected in their thinking to keep them from trusting in you, Lord God. Help them to see you clearly, Lord. And experience you genuinely, not religiously, but in a genuine experience with you, Lord God, that they can never doubt and no one can ever take away. I thank you, Lord, that your power is being activated in your children. And that they will do great things for you. It's ordained to be so. 
In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 Yes, sir. I hear that. Thank you, Lord. Father, I declare right now in the name of Jesus, based on what you've spoken out of the spirit realm, that the mental aptitude of our babies is increasing. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father God, that the work that's necessary for them to gain the grades that they desire to gain, Father God, is being made simple to them. Oh, glory. I thank you, Father God, that you are opening their understanding to see work like they've never seen it before. And they'll be 10 times wiser than their contemporaries. <laughs> and I declare that they will not be ashamed of their wisdom, but they will walk in their wisdom, Lord God. Hallelujah. And they will use that wisdom to glorify you, Lord God. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that the younger, the younger children will tutor the older kids. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, that teachers will call them out to show the class principles that are beyond their understanding. Jesus. And it's not by might <laughs> and it's not by human power or effort. It's strictly by your spirit, Lord. And I thank you that you're doing it now. You're opening the eyes of their understanding even now. Thank you, Lord. For gracing our children to excel academically. To excel in citizenship. To excel in character. <sighs> thank you, Lord. For raising our children up to represent you in ways we could only dream of is happening even now. Thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I love praise and worship, man. You go before the Lord and praise and worship and he he just opens his heart to you. He starts talking to you about things you didn't even know were on your heart, let alone things that were concerning his heart. <sighs> Hallelujah. Well, let's get into this because I, I got a lot to cover. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> I think I said good morning. Did I say good morning to everybody? OK, well, good morning to you again. If, if I don't remember saying it, but, I, you know, I just covered it again. It's all good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, let's prepare to continue the worship service by blessing the Lord with the tithe and the offerings. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hands. The ushers will get one to you when you watch this online. Those of you that watch us on our YouTube page, you can look in the link in the description below. It will show you the ways you can give if you desire to give and you're not going to be in our physical building. Then you can go to our website, www.vtfchurch.net. Click on the online giving tab. You can give safely and securely. That way we also have people that are not in the uh, immediate city or even in the state. And if you are one of those people and you desire to give into the work of the Lord, but you're concerned about how you can do it, you can send your correspondence to Victory Through Faith Church, P.O. Box 974, Bessemer, Alabama, 35021. In the house, you know we'll pray over the tithe and the offerings. I'm going to give you a kingdom nugget. And then after I give you the kingdom nugget, I'll pray over the tithe, I'll pray over the offering. And as we prepare to leave the building, you can drop your tithe and our offerings in the giving receptacle at the rear of the sanctuary. You have an usher present to show you where that needs to go if you have not done that before. So let's transition right into this because I got a lot that I got to get to, man. And I feel like let's just go by show of hands. How many of you want more? Amen. I think I think there's everybody to some degree. I like I like sing, I can't sing a lick. You know, I thought one day I could use my faith to try to sing and and I realized that I, I really didn't think I need to be singing because if I was singing, I would be trying to sing like Leon on the temptation. I'd be taking over here. I wouldn't be preaching. I wouldn't be praying. I'd be singing everywhere. So God said, no, nah, bro, I can't bless you to say I can't touch your voice because then it'll take over. So I can't sing. But I often have that reverberating in my spirit where I want more. I want more, more of your power, more of your glory. I don't want more for selfish reasons. And if you have selfish reasons for wanting more, then God can't bless you. 
Um, Cause I can't, before you leave, make sure that the ministry cuts you a check. You know what that means, right? Okay. 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 You're seed for the community. Wow. That's why you own my heart. You're seed for the community. So what I'm going to share about stewardship is going to bless you. But when you receive it, steward it well. Because the, wow, can I say that? The community is connected to your stewardship. Mm -hmm. See this? Okay. Uh huh. I, I'm a major in child development. I've been all my grades been a hundred C's, D's, and everything. So I'm up, up ahead of everybody in my class. Amen. And last week I had a big lesson of turning from from a three bedroom to a one bedroom. Okay. And that's why I haven't been coming to church until I had everything to do, like moving and all that. And then one Sunday I was trying to come to church and then I had got a big gash in my hand. Okay. And I had to go to the hospital to get three stitches. So I was like, the devil just worked and messed with me just trying to stop me from going to church. Wow. That's going to happen. Wow. But, and then I, I talked to my kids the other day. I told them, I said, Mama's not just going to school for herself. Okay. She's going for, for God and y'all too. And y'all, my main priority. That's why I'm going to school and uh, I'm receiving what I'm going to do. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's so good. So what, wow, man, that's so good, God. Um, So when he laid you on my heart, I don't, when God lays people on my, y'all know when, when the stuff shift, we format is gone, we just flowing right now. When God lays people on my heart like that, the first thing I do is I pray, I intercede. I'm so glad that you pushed through and came today. Yeah. I'm so, man, people don't realize how important their presence is. Your presence in the house. And before, I hadn't even talked to you. I hadn't talked to you since the last time you were at church. And he already took, I couldn't go forward. He spoke, he said it right after we came out of worship. And I said, do y'all remember I said, well, Lord, I'll deal with that later. And I moved on. I could not move on until I had verbalized that that needed to be done for you. Jesus. And see what, oh. See, this is why God is blessing us and this is why God is going to increase us on a level we didn't think was possible is because people are connected to our obedience. Once I was obedient to say that we were going to do what we needed to do, that's when you realize, OK, God's working for me. God's moving and you've already seen it, but he's letting you know there are things I got for you that you haven't even encountered yet. And, and it's so easy to get caught up on what we're going through and what's happening to us. And he's, he said to you that you are the seed for the community. So steward it well. I'm going to talk about it in the kingdom nugget in a, in a moment, but steward it well. Oh, Lord, can I say that? I got to make sure that's you. Yeah, because as you steward, we're not putting it if because we're in the faith realm now. As you steward it well, catch this. This might sound regular, but it's coming from the throne of God. I'll never allow you to lack like you've done in the past. Somebody write that down for her. Give it to her. You need to look at that every single day. You need to have it on your mirror when you're brushing your teeth. You need to see that on your mirror. God will never let me lack another day in my life. Whatever I just said, give it to her verbatim. You hear me? And he's giving you seed today because of what he told us to give. He's giving you seed. Some of it is seed, not all of it. OK, I have to be clear because there's a lot of religious error out there. What we're giving you as a ministry today, all of that ain't seed. Some of most of the majority of it is for you, baby. <laughs> OK, you ask God what part he wants you to sow. But the majority of it is for you and what you got to do. <sighs> and steward it well. And you'll never lack like you have in the past. Amen. 
Jesus. And you're breaking stuff that you had to encounter. You're breaking it over your children's lives. Yeah. Yeah. It stops with you. They won't deal with what you. It stops with you. Did you receive that? It stops with you. Hallelujah. Whew. All right. Where was I? Bring me back in a little. OK, thank you. So we said show of hands. How many of you want more? Right. You see why we need more? Because we supposed to be flowing like that consistently at all times in the service, outside of the service. It's my desire that we do this more outside than we ever do it inside. Because we, we got people to touch. We got a community to impact. We've got a kingdom to represent. Amen. Amen. So this is so good. I'm glad. Wow. That's amazing. Lord. OK. <clears throat> so I said by a show of hands, how many of you want more? I think that was everybody. I want more once us put both her hands up. I said last time I asked that question last year, if I could, I put my toes in the air. <laughs> I sit on, I sit on my backside and put my toes and my hands in the air. I want more, but not for selfish reasons, not for selfish reasons, Charles. I want more because I know what God wants me to do. Okay, let's get into this. All right. Kingdom nugget. This ain't the message. Say this is not, this is not pastor's, pastor's message. message. All right. So in the kingdom of God, because I got to talk to you about kingdom principles and then I'll pray over the tithe and the offerings and we'll get into as much of what I can share with you today as possible. In the kingdom of God, this is so important. OK. Because we got to balance stuff. Oftentimes we we'll hear something from a man of God or we we'll hear something from a woman of God. We we'll hear it here and we we'll hear it there and we'll get pieces of it. But we never connect it. And so we're here, men and women of God say you should prosper and you should do. And I agree you should prosper. If we're God's children, we shouldn't be lacking. We shouldn't be suffering. However, God does not bless. And this is the principle I'm going to talk to you today from from the kingdom nugget. God does not bless poor stewardship. And so we teach we should be blessed, we should prosper, we should do this, we should do that. And, and that's true, that's accurate. However, there are some criteria that has to be met on our side before God can bless us the way he desires to bless us. Amen. So listen to this. In the kingdom of God, and you can look at Matthew 25. I'm going to read from there from a well-known text. In the kingdom of God, our degree of stewardship directly impacts our level of increase. And we're not talking about the world system because we have to understand that. I don't know if we think about this enough. There are two dominant systems in the world, the kingdom of God and the world system. You're in either one or the other. You can't be in both, okay? You can't be in both. You gotta be, I'm either in the kingdom, I'm operating in the kingdom, or I'm operating in the world. Now the world is driven by work and earning, and if you do this, you can get that, and that's fine, nothing wrong with work, nothing wrong with earning. The Bible says a man don't work, he doesn't eat, so God is not opposed to you uh, laboring. What God is opposed to is us trusting our effort only. Because there are kingdom principles that we have to abide by if we want to prosper on the level that God wants us to prosper. Why? So we can impact the people that God wants us to impact. That's the reason I teach on this so much, because we need to be blessed. But we also need to realize that we are blessed to be a what? Blessing. So in the kingdom of God, our degree of stewardship directly impacts our level of increase. In other words, if I want more, then you got to be a better steward with what you already got. Because <laughs> we love saying, Lord, I'm ready for more. I'm ready for more. Give me more. But we ain't doing nothing with what we got. We're not properly managing what we have. And God is, I can imagine, oh my goodness, I can't wait to talk to God when we get to hell. I can imagine he'd be looking at us like, you don't want more, not for real. I can tell you don't want more about what you're doing. See, my children can say they want to do something, but I can tell if they really want to do it by the actions that follow the statement. And we are the same way. We tell God, God, I want to I just want to I want to receive this because I want to be a blessing to everybody. But you aren't managing what I've already given you. Let's look at Matthew 25. And we, you've heard about the parable of the talents before. Right. Let's look at this because this is an excellent text on stewardship. 
It says, and I'm reading from the New King James Version the entire day. <clears throat> it says, for the kingdom is of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. Now, the key to stewardship is realizing that I don't own anything. That's the first key to stewardship, realizing I don't own it. I am a steward of it. God has entrusted me to use it, but I don't own anything. God is the owner. I'm a manager. So if I realize that it's really not mine, then when he tells me to do something with it, I'm not tripping about it because it's not mine to say what I will and won't do anyway. So the key to effective stewardship is realizing none of it is mine. You a lie, Pastor. I bought them clothes. I bought this car. That's my house. Okay. Like my pastor told me, it sounds harsh, but you, oh, you think it's yours? Okay, die. <laughs> and see if you can take it with you. The Egyptians tried, <laughs> but guess what? They bought it gone, and that stuff's still there. It doesn't belong to us. We can use it, but we can't take it with us when we leave. If it belongs to us, when we, when we pass, when we transition, we take everything with us. We get a divine U-Haul and carry it on to the upper room. But it's not ours. <laughs> so it's going to stay on the lower floor. We can't take it with us. So check this out. Verse 14, the kingdom of heaven. So we're talking about the kingdom, not the world. It's like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. I got to go. I got to go all the way to verse 29. So I'm going to read a little fast. And to one, he gave five talents. Check this out to each accord. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm trying to rush it. And to one, he gave five talents and to another two and to another one. Why did he give them different talents to each according to his own ability? See, the reason people are trusted or entrusted with different amounts of things is because we got different ability. Obviously, that master knew this guy can handle five. This guy can handle two. This guy ain't ready for nothing but one. Nobody knows that but the Lord. So if he would have gave everybody the same amount, then that means they would have been on the same level or they would have had the same ability. But obviously they did not because they had different talents, not talents like one could tap dance, one could sew, one could sing. Talents like physical money. He gave them denominations of money. We'll see that in a moment. Verse 16. Well, to each his own ability. And he immediately went on a journey. Verse 16. Then he who had received five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained how many more? Two more. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his own money. Whose money? Ah, so it's not ours, is it? He hid whose money? The Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Uh -oh. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. Take out what his Lord said. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over Many things enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 22, he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered unto me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. So the guy who gained two was just as excited about the guy who gained five because he wasn't looking over at the guy who had five like, man, I should have got five. No, he was happy about what he did with what he was entrusted with. In other words, he stayed in his lane. You ever been in a situation where you happy with everything you got until you look over in somebody else's tray and be like, oh, man, wait a minute. Like, I'm, I, I'm happy with the amount of fries I got in my box, but wait a minute. You got a large? No, we both got medium. Uh-uh. They didn't even fold the bottom of your box. You got too much. So we were fine until we were able to compare it to somebody else's. So the key, another key of stewardship is staying in your lane, being faithful with what you've been given, honoring God with what you've been entrusted with, not trying to compare yourself to somebody else because, well, God, you gave them this. Obviously, they had the ability to handle it. And if I really want to get at that level, then God help me get to that point where you can trust me with that amount of talent as well. Staying with the script. Amen. Amen. OK, let's go. 
He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done. So the one that gained two got the same praise that the one who gained five got. He said, well done, good and faithful servant, because God's not looking at a mouse anyway. He's looking at motive and production. Wow. What are you doing with what I've given you? Wow. You have been faithful. You have been what? Faithful. faithful. Not wasteful, but faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Often we can see a principle here. God doesn't put you in a rulership position until you've shown yourself to be faithful as a servant. See, you got to be faithful as a servant before God can entrust you over people. He said, look, I'm going to make you ruler over many what things. I'm going to entrust you over many things and I'm going to entrust you over many people because you've shown yourself to be faithful in the minor areas. Wow, I got to be faithful with the small stuff if I want God to put me in major areas and major arenas. Amen. OK, so he can enter into the joy of his Lord. Also, verse 24, then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, now I believe because it's a parable. So technically, when Jesus is ministering along the lines of a parable, he doesn't give a name. So it's a it's an allegory. It's something Jesus uses to draw an example. It, not, it doesn't necessarily mean it was a real life incident. When Jesus gives a name, then, you know, he's talking about an, an actual incident that occurred somewhere in the scriptures or somewhere in eternity past or whatever. So listen, he said, because <laughs> often your perception of God will limit what you do for him. <laughs> then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. Reaping. Who going to tell they boss that reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered. And I was afraid. <laughs> I was scared of you. And so I went and hid your talent in the ground. Check out this now. This is a slap word the moment in my book. I know we're supposed to walk in love, but when I read that, I was like, if I was his Lord, I would have I would have had to chaw him up. <laughs> he said, look, wait, y'all catch this. It's a small detail, but it's major to me. He said, first of all, he said, you're a hard man in verse 24. You reap where you haven't sown and you gather where you have scattered no seeds saying you taking stuff and you hadn't put no work in. He said, and I was afraid because I know you a bad manager in the first place. And so I just went and hid your talent. At least he acknowledged that it was his talent and, and it belonged to him. I hid your talent in the ground. Look, now this is where I got a little heated. There you have what is your. This joker didn't even dig it up and bring it back to the master. He said, I put it in the ground. Go get it. There you have what is yours. The, like, what did you say back in the day? The unmitigated gall. See, my dad is a word to me. If I like to, I like to step in his shoes there. The audacity. You know, he'll cock his shoulders back. The unmitigated gall. <laughs> ah, that dude said, go dig up what I buried. Check out what his Lord said. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. That was the issue. Laziness. He didn't just say wicked. He said, you a lazy little son, ain't you? If you I don't believe the Lord was actually this way. I believe this dude with the one talent had a bad image of his master because the other two guys didn't say that. The other the dude with the five talents, the dude with the two talents, they didn't say you a hard man. So we knew if we ain't produce for you. You were going to mess us up. Only this guy said it. And maybe he said it because he knew he was lazy in the first place. That's why he only got one talent. And Lord, no, you ain't about to do nothing, but I'm going to give you something anyway just to see. <laughs> he said, OK. You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming. I would have received back my own with interest. He said, if you just would have if you just would have had enough sense to put it in the bank, at least I would have came back with some interest. He said, you didn't even do that. You were too lazy to drive downtown. You just dug a hole in your law in your yard and buried it. Now, check out what he says now. Therefore, because God ain't going to keep God won't continue to bless bad stewardship. 
He said, therefore, take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10. Now, that seems unfair from a worldly perspective. You'd be like, well, God, he got 10. Why are you going to give him more? Because he's shown himself to be faithful with what I give him. Yeah. See, that's why you can't be counting other folks' coins because you don't know the process they went through to get to that level. What you need to be doing is following and watching their lives and emulating some principles from their lives to do what they're doing. My wife got a book from a person that, as, as, that I had never heard of, but he's a pretty renowned guy in Burma, actually worldwide, and he owns a few McDonald's chains, and I was reading his book, and I'm getting some good life principles from that. And it's not, it's not things you haven't already heard, but when you see somebody walking in it, it motivates you to see, I can do this too. I can make some adjustments and walk on this same level. Because he's from the South just like I'm from the South. So the only reason why you're limiting yourself is because you don't trust yourself. But guess what? You shouldn't be trusting yourself anyway. You should trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Or oh, check this out. Lean. Not, oh, this was this for a couple of people. Or oh, lean not to your own education. See, the reason we don't do some things is because we don't feel like we got the education necessary to do it. And God said, I never spoke to you about school in the first place. <laughs> I didn't say trust in school with all your heart and lean not to your own degrees. I said trust in me with all your heart. Wow. Man, I got to wrap this up. This is the longest nugget. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10. Listen to this. Verse 29. I'm going to stop. Now I'm going to get into the real message today. <laughs> For to everyone who has. More will be given. And he will have what? Abundance. But on the flip side. But from him who does not have even what he has will be taken away. Why doesn't he have? Because he wasn't a good steward over what I entrusted to him. That's what we mean. That's why I say stewardship is necessary if you want more. We got to be not just stewardship, good stewardship. Lord, show me what to do with what you've given me. And, and some of us have to admit, Lord, I know in the past I have blown everything you sent my way. I should have more by now. I should have done more by now. I understand that, Lord, but I'm not looking in the past any longer. From this moment forward, Lord, help me to be a good steward over everything you entrust to my care. Can you do that? Because that's what stewardship is. Stewardship is the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. So that means I realize God is entrusting me with finances. I'm going to be a good steward with it so he can increase me more and more. Amen. Last statement, and then we'll I'll pray over the tithe and the offerings, and we'll get into our real message today. God is unable. Say unable. unable. Now, when I start a statement by saying what God can't do or won't do, understand God can do everything. So when I say he's unable to do a thing, that means the reason he can't do it is because we aren't doing something we're supposed to do. God can do anything. He's God all by himself. <laughs> like the old Baptist preacher and he don't need nobody else <laughs> so God is unable to place you in a position of great influence if say if if, if you are unable to display good stewardship wow. see if I can't he can't so maybe the reason my prayers for more are going unanswered is because I haven't been a good steward over what I currently possess. See, this is a time for introspection. And Lord, what should I do with what you've trusted me with already? Help me make better choices. Help me make better decisions with what you entrust me with. I remember I had a fun. It's, it's funny that you're here today because I thought about you and Dr. Winston. When I was brushing my teeth this morning, I remember hearing a message years, years, years ago where Dr. Winston said, uh, you know, when your toothpaste getting low and he said he don't he don't he don't squeeze it or he don't roll up. He said, I throw it away. That, I think he said that was a poverty mentality or something like that. That bothered me. That bothered me because I was like poverty mentality. And it's saying this ain't a knock against Dr. Winston. Can I can I share my revelation of that? Give me some spiritual liberty, apostle. 
<laughs> oh, it's, a, it's an awesome anointing in the house today. I did it this morning, and I've done it several times when I got toothpaste under the sink, but check this out. I don't like being wasteful. See, I believe in being a good steward over everything God has entrusted me to. So y'all know what I did this morning with my tube of toothpaste? I laid it on the sink and I pulled that comb out with the flat edge and I put it at the base of the tube and I held the top firmly against the sink and I commenced to squeeze forward. And I said, it's another four, five days worth of toothpaste in this thing. Well, I ain't finna throw this away. I said, that ain't poverty mentality. That's good stewardship. <laughs> See, I'm applying that to every area, especially when I already got some more under the sink. That's good stewardship. I said, wait a minute. Now, I, I will say this. I'm not on Dr. Bill Winston's level. That man has, and I don't mean spiritual, I mean that man has accomplished things in, in the material realm, in the physical realm, in the spiritual realm. He has accomplished things I hadn't even, I hadn't even blinked at yet. So when you're on that level, oh, okay, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. When you're on that level and you fought the beast of poverty, like Paul said, I fought with beasts at Ephesus. When you fought the beast of poverty, you can't go back to anything that reminds you of that. But see, he's already broken through that thing. So now he's in a position, I would imagine, I don't know him personally, but I would imagine he's in a position where he has to guard himself, where he can't allow himself to seep back into that mentality. I, on the other hand, am on the position to where I'm being a good steward over everything you put in my hand, so I'm not letting anything go to waste. So it's not like one is right and one is wrong. We're just on different aisles. Glory to God. So we won't judge his statement. I think why God is sharing it with us is because of a lot of a lot of us have believed that if we really want to prosper in God, we got to be a little wasteful. Don't you got to get rid of some stuff. No, 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 no. You do. But sow it. Sow it. Baby, <laughs> I was so excited when I finished squeezing that tube and saw another four or five days worth of toothpaste. I said, wait a minute. I have been missing. I was, I'll never throw another tube away before I push it up to the top. <laughs> but that taught me something about, it's amazing that he was teaching me stewardship as I was brushing my teeth. Oh, thank you, Lord, because y'all know I always got to back it up with something biblical. Because if wastefulness was God's ideal and God's ideal way for us to move, then when Jesus committed the miracle where the fish and the five loaves and they fed thousands, men plus women and children, traditionally probably over 10,000 people, what did Jesus say? He said, I'm glad everybody good and full. Now let's go. Nope. Guess what he said? Gather up the fragments. We don't want to lose nothing. What was he saying? Don't despise them crumbs. Yeah. <laughs> Don't despise those fragments. Don't be wasteful. Jesus now, the one who created all this in the first place. Now, if I created it, I don't have to fit. I don't have to fool with the fragments. But Jesus said, gather the fragments. Don't be wasteful. And obviously they didn't realize what they had because they gathered 12 baskets full. Mm. Could it be that the reason God hadn't moved on that prayer request that you submitted to him months ago is because you haven't taken inventory of your fragments? Mm. Ooh, ain't that a C-Law moment? Check out your fragments. Because <laughs> th that's so good, God. Because they, they interspersed all over the place. You forgot what you got. Wow. <laughs> you forgot what you got because it's all over the place. Take inventory of your fragments. And then once we do that, now we're in a position to be better stewards. And now God can begin answering those prayers because he sees now that our stewardship is intact. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let me pray over the time then offer and then I get it. I'm going to give you about 20, 25 minutes of the main message and then I'm going to lock it down. Father God, I thank you for the revelation that you gave us today concerning stewardship and not being wasteful. And Lord, if you said it, 
then you also have already graced us to do it. So I pray for every person in this sanctuary. I pray for every person that will watch this message online later. I pray that they receive your grace to be good stewards over everything that comes into their possession. Help us to take inventory of our fragments with the mindset to bless those that have less than we do. Help us to be good stewards of our talents. Help us to be good stewards of our information. Help us to be good stewards of what we currently have so that you can bless us to receive more and be a greater influence to those around us in Jesus name. Amen. Man, that's good. That's good, man. That's good enough to stop. Truth be told. But I got to go. I got to get into this. I got some things I got to touch on today. So in the words of that prophet from the 90s, can't stop, won't stop. You'll get that when you get home. All right. Y'all ready for this? Amen. Lesson two of our ongoing series, imitating our savior. Who is our savior? Jesus Christ, the son of God, all God, all man. And it's our responsibility to imitate him. Y'all follow me on that? Imitating our savior. Our subtopic is developing and displaying Christ like character, developing and displaying Christ like character. Now, the reason I'm so excited about teaching this, like I alluded to last week, is because uh, my pastor at the end of 2021, I believe, said that he had heard from God that the next move of God was going to be in the area of character. And so it's important for us as children of God to develop strong spiritual character. We need to allow God to develop our character, though. We don't just do this in our own strength. And I got to remind everybody, when, when I give you instruction as far as what we have to do, don't ever try to do it in your own strength. Everything God tells us to do, he graces us to do. So receive the grace to do what he's telling us to do. Self-discipline won't be enough to do it. We need divine assistance, especially when you're talking about developing godly character, because we so locked into our own way of thinking, way of being, way of doing. So when we got to go against how we've been wired for so many years, it's hard to do that. Y'all heard people. You might have been that person that said, well, this just me. You got to take me how I am. I ain't changing for nobody. Everybody changes. Everybody changes. You should change. OK, don't change for nobody. Change for somebody. Change for yourself. We should not be the same people we were last year, last, last decade. We should be constantly changing. <laughs> as a side note, as you change, you'll really discover who really loves you versus who's, this, who's just there receiving something from you. When people start falling away as you change, maybe they were, they were, never, they were never there for the genuine you anyway. Because some, sometimes stuff got to fall off. Sometimes things have to fall off. Sometimes things have to be added. OK, my, my anger needs to fall off and my patience needs to be added. Because because anger. Causes a normally rational person to make irrational choices because it's hard to think. That's why they call it blinding anger or blinding rage. It's hard to think through anger. And so as I lay aside my anger and I develop patience, my, my, my partner that was always rocking with me that just love for something to pop off, he might have to fall off for a season because he always on ready. But I'm not trying to go in that direction anymore. So, you know, maybe maybe you got to understand where I'm coming from. And if you aren't comfortable with that transition, then maybe we've reached our impasse. Well, we won't go any further together. Maybe this is our fork in the road. Still got love for you, but if where I'm going is not a is an issue for you, then maybe we can't go together. Preferably, we'll find ourselves merging again somewhere on down the road as better people. But right now, I got to go in a different direction. Amen. We need to allow God to develop our character. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who what strengthens you. So whatever you feel like you can't do good, let Jesus get involved. Let Jesus help you. I just. I, my mouth, I just, I got a, I just got a sassy mouth. I just, I just have to say what's on my mind. 
<laughs> well, guess what? Let Jesus help you stop saying what's on your mind. Because if truth be told, you know after you said, you be beating yourself up for saying what you said because you wish you had more control over your mouth. Now, in the moment, it feel good. I know it feel good to tell them off. It feel good to just, just blah, 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 asterisks and ampersands and pounds and hashtags, everything coming out your mouth. <laughs> and then when you walk away, you be like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. I hate that they took me to that point. Hate that they took me to that level. Well, what I've learned, I've shared this with you before, what I've learned is to keep me from going to that level again. It's very humbling. I have to go back and apologize to the person that was able to take me to that level. I had to apologize. I told y'all before I had to apologize to my child. I think at the time, I don't even remember which child it was. Whoever it was, they were, it was Aaliyah. She was like, what, five, six? Whatever she was doing, whatever she said, I got heated. And my voice went up. And, my, and Aaliyah's very, she's a very sensitive spirit. So I saw her, I, you, you know how when you're getting on your child, you can just see their face distort? And I knew, oh, man. They said, went too far. I, I knew I went too far because she was in the corner like this. She was cringe and I was like, but you know, I was so heated. I was, I ain't care. Shouldn't have made me go too far. You know when you hate it, you, you know you're wrong, and you just be like, <laughs> you don't know the crowd or, or the <laughs> pray or what. So I just went to another room, and the Lord, I think this is the instance where the Lord told me, I don't deal with you like that. I don't raise my voice. I don't yell at you when you mess up. I'm like, yeah, I want to hide under the rock. And guess what he told me to do? Go back and apologize. Now, he told me to do something my parents have never done to me. I don't know about y'all, but I grew up in a household where even if your mama cut your right toe off, she would have told you your foot shouldn't have been in the way. <laughs> so, for, so for a parent to come back and apologize to a five-year-old and say, baby, I'm sorry, although what you did was wrong, I should not have handled it. My, my handling of the situation was wrong. Do you forgive me? And my baby said, yes. Oh, that broke me in the best way possible because it, it, it broke something in me that I didn't even know was holding me. And man, I thank God for it. And, and, and now our children, we got a, a great relationship. Anything can be better. Anytime people say what's good, just understand there's always a not so good side to every situation, every relationship, whatever it is, whether it's parental, child, relational, marriage. Anytime you hear somebody saying how good it is, just also understand that the moon also has a dark side. It's still the moon. It's still bright at night. It's still a full moon. It's still a new moon. It's still a half moon. Sometimes it's a super moon, but also realize it's a black side to that baby, too. So by no means am I saying it's perfect, but I thank God that there's transparency in my household where our kids can come to us. And I believe a, a major step in that is when I went back and apologized. Because it shows, okay, although my parents are adults, sometimes they can be wrong, and I can trust them to rectify it later. <sighs> it broke something. So sometimes what you have to do, if you don't want to be triggered by that person or that situation, well, we'll stick with people because you can't apologize to a situation. If you don't want to be triggered by that person, is you have to go back and apologize for being, oh, okay, that's good. You have to apologize for how you reacted once you were triggered. I'm sorry. Not, not, this is what you shouldn't do. I mean, I always got to tell you what you shouldn't do before I can tell you what you should do. What you shouldn't do is say, I'm sorry, but you shouldn't have said what you said. You were so far out of line. I don't know who you think I am, and I don't know where you come from. But I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you ain't sorry. You ain't going to apologize either. Well, I retract my apology. I ain't sorry. No. Hey, I'm sorry. My reaction was wrong. And just let it be that. 
I practiced that with Mel when I first started doing it, and I was, I was just sure Mel was gonna be like, I'm sorry too, baby. I was wrong as well. Y'all wanna know what, Lady Mel? I better be careful, because one day she might get up and preach and she might tell all my stuff. I be telling all her stuff. I said, Lady Mel, for whatever, I said, I'm sorry, I apologize. I shouldn't have responded the way I did. You know what Lady Mel said in her righteous, dignified voice? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was it. That was it. It was no, I was wrong to have none of that. No acknowledgement of her involvement at all. It was just like, mm-hmm. When she gave me a little smirk, a little smile to where I knew, I'm sorry too, but I ain't finna say it right now. <laughs> See, a guy told me years ago, we were in a men's group, men's fellowship group, and he said something, for whatever reason, I had just never thought about it before. He said, guys, and he was around my age, he said, you should study your wife. And he meant you should step back and watch her mannerisms. Watch how she responds. Watch how she reacts. Watch what she says to certain things. Study her like you're studying for a quiz. So I don't have to get her to do things to validate me. If I study her, then I can see with one move of her body language that, okay, we're on the same page. And in that, it opens up a a, a level of trust in the relationship that very few people enjoy. And she's supposed to be, I I ain't letting y'all off the hook, ladies, you know that now. And she's supposed to be studying us as well, fellas. It's a mutual, we in a mutual study group. <laughs> we, we, we both, our main topic should be our spouse. How can I do whatever needs to be done to make sure that my spouse is completely happy? See, that, that's the key to it. I take the focus off of me and I put it on my spouse. What does she need? What does she want? What does he need? What does he want? Well, Pastor, what about me? You're missing the concept. <laughs> in order to do that, I got to trust God with me. I got to trust God with me because, God, you know that when I do this, we already, you know, you've ever done something already knowing what the end result was going to be, that you knew that it wasn't going to work out the way you wanted it to work out, but you did it anyway because you felt like God was telling you to do it. And you were telling God, I'm going to do it, but you already know it ain't going to work. <laughs> yeah, that we tell God, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because you told me. But you already know, God, he ain't finna do nothing. Okay, just do it. And I've done things like that, and I'm like, wow, didn't expect that to happen. Maybe, I, maybe God do know a little something, so. Maybe I do need to trust him. All of that comes under the heading of developing godly character. Remember last week we learned that we are part of the God class, and therefore we are representatives of the kingdom. Now he big G. We what? Little G's. Don't you ever capitalize your G. Stay little. Keep that G little. You are, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are a little G God, made in his image, made in his likeness. But there is only one big G God. Amen? Amen. So let's, let's talk about imitating our Savior a little more. I got... A lot here, but I'm only going to share three points with you. And I'm going to lock this down because I've already given you a lot. I don't want to I don't want to I want you to regurgitate this stuff. I've been feeding you for every born again child of God. Jesus Christ is our example. That's and I, that sounds simple. Like, well, yeah, he saved us. So, yeah, no. How many of us really don't show, don't don't raise your hands because it's rhetorical. But how many of us really look to Jesus daily to be our example? Meaning the way I speak today, the way I move today, the way I respond to people today, I'm going to imitate Jesus. Remember, it's rhetorical. Don't say nothing. How many of us do that? I'm going to answer for y'all. Not many. Not many of us do it. Not because I don't think we can. I just don't think we've been taught to do it. We dance around the topic in religious circles and we dance around the topic in church. I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be just like him. I want to go to the cross and die like he died. Why? (laughs) You are not perfect. You ain't sinless. If you die, you just did. The only person that need to go to the cross was Jesus. We don't need you emulating Jesus in that fashion. 
<laughs> it sounds good and we get worked up, but when we walk out, now what am I supposed to do? Where the cross at? <laughs> I'm gonna go hang on a light pole? What am I supposed to do? No, no, no. We are to look like Jesus in how we emulate him. We emulate the master. We imitate the master. We don't have to do what he did because he already did it. But we do have to use him as an example, as a model. Jesus Christ should be our example. He is the model that we should follow. Say, Jesus is the model, Jesus is the model. That, I that I should follow. Now look at John 13, 15. Put John 13, 15 up for me. I want to show you this and I'm going to show you something in uh, Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> John 13, 15. Who is our example? Jesus. Now, in the context, I'm going to pull it a little bit out of context. because I'm, well, I'm not going to pull it out of context, but I'm only going to give you one scripture. But in the context, Jesus is talking about the fact that he just washed his disciples feet and he was showing them how they ought to humble themselves in order to do what he has done. He's saying, I am who I am, but I'm not too big to wash y'all feet. And in that culture, washing somebody's feet was considered a menial you know, task. That was something you just didn't do. That was like a, a low person on the totem pole of you washing somebody's feet. So for Jesus to wash his disciples' feet, that was saying one of them didn't even want him to do it. He was like, no, 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 you shouldn't wash my feet. But Jesus was showing them what servanthood looks like. Well, if I'm secure in who I am, I'm not bothered by what I have to do. Oh, man, I had to learn that lesson in marriage, too. Because I got married, I thought, you know, my wife was supposed to wash the dishes. I just, that's, what, oh, Lord, if it touch you, don't say nothing. If I step on your toes, just don't shout out loud. And nobody will know. I thought, okay, she's supposed to wash the dishes. That's what I'm, in my house, my mom washed the dishes. My dad cut the grass, so I knew she wasn't going to be outside cutting grass. I didn't, know, I didn't know that Mel had an aversion toward dishes. Now, she ain't going to let stuff stack up and stack up and stack up, but she wasn't feeling dishes at all. They get thrown in the dishwasher. But I thought that she was going to be, you know, like in, at the sink, too. <laughs> soapy water right here. <laughs> Clear water right here, you're gonna wash them up and dunk. Mm mm, Mel, like, mm, put them in, put them in the dishwasher. <laughs> That's how she talks, mm mm, put them in, and that was it. So, if it did stack up to where a couple of bowls, and you know, we both working, so it ain't like she just at home chilling. I had to get over the fact that, oh, I've walked by this kitchen 12 times. Mm -hmm. I guess I can wash these three bowls up real quick. I mean, it ain't, it ain't gonna make me be any less of a man. If it's bothering me that much, Charles, maybe I need to do something about it. Because guess what? I was doing something about it before we got married. Yeah. <laughs> I was washing my bowls and washing my forks and washing my plates before we got married. So if it's bothering me now, let me wash it now. But in the same fashion, if you see that trash overflowing and I don't get to it, don't fuss at me. You can pull that hefty out. <laughs> you can wrestle with it when it... <laughs> And double tie it yourself. And I come in that you did good, girl. You did good. So, so let's let's help each other. Let's help each other. I'm willing to check this out. I wasn't serving Melody. I was serving the family. I was serving the household. And I didn't feel any less of a man. I didn't feel like, well, I ain't the head of the house no more. I didn't just put Don on two dishes. What am I doing? No, because a major part of leadership is service. Major part of leadership is service. If you ain't, bro, if you ain't willing to serve, you ain't ready to be a leader. Everybody want the top spot. Everybody want to be the star. Everybody want to be on top. But wait a minute, if you got to get on top, there are rungs that you have to climb titled leadership, submission, humility. You got to walk those, you got to climb those rungs before you get to the top of the ladder where you can start giving direction and giving guidance. Amen. Amen. John 13, 15. So Jesus says, for I have given you. I can't read that out of context. Let me go up to verse 12. <clears throat> Just so you get a little idea of what what goes on. Y'all got 12 on the screen. OK, good. Thank you. He said, so when he had washed their feet, I told you he was washing their feet, taking his garments and sat down again. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? 
You call me teacher and Lord and you say, well, for so I am. In other words, he said, now that I've washed your feet, my position hadn't changed. I'm still your teacher. I'm still your Lord. If I then your Lord, I'm glad you made me go up, God. Thank you. If I then your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Verse 13 is the operative verse. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Jesus said, I'm giving you how it's supposed to be done. I'm giving you the example. I'm showing you what it's supposed to look like. Don't just do what I say, do what I've done. Look at Ephesians 5. Y'all with me? Man, it's some good stuff. I'm excited about what God, I, I said this last week. I got to say it again. I'm excited about the fact that God is even sharing this with us because that means we're ready for it. God ain't going to share it if we ain't ready for it. So the fact that he's sharing it with us means that we are in a place that we, Penelope, we ready, girl. We are ready. We are ready for what he's sharing. Well, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so excited about this because I, 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 y'all be on my heart. Y'all be on my mind. So much so that sometimes I just have to pray in the spirit so I don't tip over into that anxious arena. But the Bible says be careful for nothing or be anxious for nothing. So a lot of times when y'all are on my heart and y'all are on my mind, I just have to start interceding in the spirit because I want to take on the care. But I do want to help push you through whatever's going on. Amen. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter five, verses one and two. Check this out. It says, therefore, be what does that word say? imitators wow therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma and what I love about this is okay imitate God like dear children walk in love as Christ also has loved us and what did he do he gave himself for us Oftentimes, if you're going to imitate Christ in any situation, you're going to have to, oh, you got to give up your right to be right. The Bible says that Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. Think about that for a minute. Jesus is just as much God as God is. And the Bible says that Jesus learned obedience because before he had taken on the form of flesh, he never had to be obedient to anything. He was God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus learned obedience on this earth by what he suffered. What do you mean, Pastor Jay, by him taking the cross? And not, I don't think that's what it's referring to. You could include it in it. I think the scripture is saying Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered when he knew he could have done something different. Well, Jesus always wanted to do what God wanted him to do. That's not true. Because if that were the case, there would never have been a garden incident where Jesus was praying and crying almost drops of blood. When he said, look, if I say not my will, but your will be done, that indicates how many wills at work. Two. Who said one? You said that last year. Two. <laughs> if, if I say not my will, but your will, how many wills are identified? Two. My will and your will. So if Jesus is praying and he says, nevertheless, not my will, but your will, Jesus is saying right now at this moment, I don't want to do what I know you want me to do. Oh, wait a minute, Pastor Jay, this is Jesus. He always wanted to do. Read your Bible. I ain't making this up. He said, not my will. <laughs> you know how we know he want to do it? Because earlier on in that passage, he said, let this cup pass from me. <laughs> I don't want to sip this. <laughs> I don't want to go through this. I don't want to deal with this. Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered, and he suffered it because he loves us. So the reason, oh, that's so good. The reason we need to imitate our Savior is because love will take us places where selfishness will never open doors for yeah, sometimes we got to love people and up front, it looks like they're getting the advantage. Anybody ever been in that situation where you did something for somebody and it helped them, but they didn't think about you after the fact at all? And you put, I mean, you stayed up late at night, you put your best into, I mean, you, you made sure it was top notch for them. 
But then when you came around and said, hey, can you do it for me? Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> ah, ah. They can't even get the words out. When? That, oh, I, I, I'm not going to be busy. Oh, I'm, I misspoke. Not that day. That day. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to be busy that day, too. I ain't tell you yet. I, I know I'm, my schedule, though. My schedule just packed. Understand <laughs> that everybody's not built like you. But if I do for others, <laughs> help me tread this carefully, Lord. If I do for others without thought of return, God will make sure that I never lack anything. Because I'm not looking to man to do anything. I'm looking to God. Now, be clear. God's going to use men to bless you. It just might not be the men or the women you thought it was going to be. Y'all know how it is. You bless somebody, you know what they got, so you just know they're going to bless you later. And then you don't hear hide nor have from them ever again. You'd be like, Lord, what was that about? He said, it wasn't about nothing. That was you. That was you. Because I believe in spirit-led sowing. Can I say that real quick? Y'all give me about five minutes to talk about it. It might not even be five minutes to talk about spirit list. I'm done with imitating our Savior. I'm, I'm going to pick up next week at, at my point number two. Because I, I really got about three, four weeks of information, so I don't have to squeeze everything into today. <clears throat> Let me help you with this. I believe in spirit led giving. Why? Because when people find out or when people know that you are a Christian and they might even they might not even identify as you as a you as a Christian. They might, they might just say you're religious. When people realize that you're a Christian or that you're religious, oftentimes people like to take advantage of that. And when people show up. <laughs> wrong with you? I ain't gonna make it. I ain't gonna make it. What you mean you ain't gonna make it? I ain't got enough. You ain't got enough of what? I can't do it. I can't pay it. We just came back from vacation last week. <laughs> you treated me the last... Wait a... Whoa! <laughs> you treated me the last last week. We just came back from vacation. Now you ain't gonna make it? What's... <laughs> I don't understand this. <laughs> Wait a minute. What happened? <laughs> I just need your help. <laughs> I know I was praying and God told me that. He said, check with my daughter. <laughs> now me and God, we so close now. <laughs> he said, check with my daughter. And he just, no, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me help you. Let me amend what God told you. <laughs> what God said is, baby, you blew your check, daughter. <laughs> he said, check with my daughter. He said, you blew your check, daughter. Because I believe this with all my heart, and we can connect this to the giving nugget. If I continue to give more to bad stewards, I become one by what? Association. If you're a bad steward, and I know you're a bad steward, and I keep giving to you, and I know you're a bad steward, I become a bad steward by what? Association. Point, if I get in the car with my friend and my friend decides today I'm finna rob a bank, I'm driving the car, he goes in, he says, I gotta make a transaction. I think he got an account there. He running out with a pistol falling out of his pocket with a bag, a burlap bag. I'm like, what you doing? I told you I had to make a, a withdrawal. I drive off, he just robbed the bank, the police pull us over, I am going to jail just like he did because I am an accomplice to his bad behavior. They don't care if I knew about it or not, I'm an accomplice. So if I keep giving more to bad stewards, I'm a bad steward because I'm an accomplice to their bad behavior. So you know what this Holy Spirit has trained me to say in situations? No. Now I gotta tell y'all, it touches my heart. I have to wrestle with that because as a pastor and as just a person that loves people, I want to, if I got it, I want to do it for everybody I can do it for. I want to help everybody I can help. But there are times when the Spirit of God has told me to not get involved. I don't believe she'll be too upset with me saying it. My own sister, well, I can say my own sister because I got two, so y'all don't, don't know which one I'm talking about. My own sister reached out to me a couple of years ago. She said, I, I'm in a situation and I need this amount. And I do everything I do, I'm gonna pray first. 
I said, I tell you what, let me pray about it. Now, y'all listening to me carefully? Because I we had the amount. First of all, he, he, you, this is how you just sweep a lot of stuff off the table. If they're asking you to do something you ain't got, they ain't sent to you. If they're saying, hey, I need you to bless me with this, if I don't have it to bless you with, you can't do the wrong prayer. I can't. Nope. Not my, here you go. It's not my assignment. Because if God sent you to me, I would have what you're asking for. But that's a whole nother story. So my own sister came. She said she needed this amount. This was a couple of years ago. I said, let me pray about it. Because it was over $50. So anything over $50, my wife and I have to be in agreement on it. We made that rule early on in the relationship. If we spend over, now we can spend $49.98. <laughs> we can spend $49.99. I ain't, I ain't got to clear it. She ain't got to clear it with me. But if it crossed that 50 threshold, we have to make sure that we in agreement on it. That's something we, I'm not telling y'all to model that for y'all relationships and y'all marriages. That's just something we did to help us to flow on the level that God wants us to flow on. So what my sister was asking was way over that amount. So before I even brought it up to Lady Mel, I brought it up to God. I said, Lord, can we, should we do this? He told me just plan it. Oh, he, he didn't tell me. I don't want to oversell it. He led me by saying no. And I, and I reached out to her the next day. I said, I said, so-and-so, I almost called her name. I said, so-and-so, you know me, I prayed about it. I believe the Spirit of God told me to not do it. Now, y'all got to, from a familiar aspect, that hurts when your family member telling you, I got it, but God told me not to give it to you. You might have some family members that want to slap you and God after you say that. Because I didn't say I didn't have it. I said I have it. Well, I didn't tell her I have it. But it was implied that we got it, but God told me no. I was so worried about how she was going to respond. Because not only, yeah, I was a pastor. Not only am I a pastor, it's your brother. But I got clarity that God is saying no. I told her, she said, that's all right. I understand, and I appreciate you even entertaining it. And then she called me a few days later and said God had moved miraculously. Something that came through that she had no idea was even cooking for her. Sometimes your no opens the door for God to do what he had planned all along. You know why a lot of people don't see God move in their life? Because you in the way. Oh, let me get bathed. Oh, let me get this. Let me, get, let me do it. Wait a minute. Can they experience God for themselves? Can they pray and ask God, how do I need to handle this? Instead of coming to you every time their stewardship shows up to be lacking. Whoever that may be. We be so quick to jump in. Now, there are sometimes, I'm not telling you to stop helping your folks, because sometimes you just got a heart for people. It, you might have a budget set aside to help out somebody that you know is going to come to you. That's fine. If you and God clear on that, that's fine. But just understand your stewardship is at stake. You got to understand where they are. If you know they, they out balling and doing all this and doing all that and you look on social media and, and they got the most, ex, it's not even a word, they got the most expensivest, expensivest of bottles in the club. And you just look like, oh, okay, and then they come to you next week, man. Bah, bro, you know it's hard out here in these streets, man. I just, I just need you to float me something to next week, man. You know I'm good for it. Bro, you drunk what you needed. I'm not going to support bad stewardship. Now, you don't have to tell them all that. You, know, you don't have to say all that. Be like, and don't say you don't have it because we don't want to make negative confession. Not going to be able to do it. Huh? What you say? And that's it. What the Bible say? Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. I'm not going to be. That's it. And then you. I'm so glad you said it. And then you'll really find out if they really love you by how they handle the no. Now, that's all right. I appreciate you. But if they flip, if they lose it, if they cuss you out, if they, you know how far run up. What? If they do that to you. Cut it off. I'm, I apologize if I scared you online when you watch this. I know I came close to the screen. Cut it off. Because they have just identified themselves as a user. If my note invites anger, you're dealing with a user. Wow, that's so good. God putting us up on so much game today. It's ridiculous. <laughs> like if my note angers you, you're a user. 
You might be a family member, but you're still a what? User. Ain't it though? It's such a word. It's amazing. I can't go no further. That's it. I'm done. That was the last statement. If there ain't, if you don't know angers them, they're a user. And you don't have to tell them, you a user. Just put them in the proper category. And so now you know I ain't called to that. Because I know who you are now. I love you. You still my family. We'll, we'll, we'll still have matching t-shirts at the family reunion. <laughs> but I won't aid and abet your poor stewardship choices any longer. Because then that makes me one. And I got, I got too much on the line to be a poor steward. Amen? Man, we touched a lot of stuff today, didn't we? That's all I got for you. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <clears throat> My God, my God, my God, wow. I got to go back and watch this for myself. He dropped so much stuff on us. It's almost, wow. Well, for my online crew, <laughs> we appreciate you for fellowshipping with us today. I pray that you were blessed by what you heard. Remember this, you are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service, and your success is in God's word. We love you all. Be blessed in Jesus' name.